Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain The Karate Kid. This movie tells the story of an American boy who finds himself bullied by a rebellious kung fu prodigy at his school. However, things change after he befriends a maintenance man who is a kung fu expert. Will he finally defeat his bullies? Let's find out in The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid tells the story of Dree Parker, a 12-year-old boy who lives with his widowed mother, Sherry. One day, Dree had to leave his hometown, Detroit, and move to Beijing because his mother had to work there for some time. Dree doesn't seem very enthusiastic about his move to Beijing which he doesn't think is as cool as his hometown. He wasn't even interested in learning Chinese like his mother did. However, Dree had no other choice because his mother had to move there for the sake of her work. Upon arrival in Beijing, Dree and his mother were immediately directed to the apartment building that would be their residence. The atmosphere in Beijing was completely different from where he used to live. Dree seemed to have felt hopeless before adjusting to living there because the people there were not fluent in English. Even the SpongeBob show on TV uses a Mandarin dubber and subtitle. Seeing the jacket lying on the floor, Sherry then asked Dree to always hang his jacket in its place. She then told him to call Mr. Han, a maintenance man at the apartment building to fix a broken hot water faucet. Dree immediately obeyed his mother's orders and looked for Mr. Han. However, when he arrives at Mr. Han, it turns out the man is having lunch and tells him to wait until he finishes eating. While waiting for him, Dree saw that Mr. Han was bothered by a fly. He thought Mr. Han will catch the fly using chopsticks like he saw in kung fu movies. But it turns out he even used a fly swatter. Dree who felt disappointed then left from there. Dree went to a nearby park to relieve boredom and found that he was quite easy to mingle with the people there, even though language hindered communication between them. He seemed engrossed in playing basketball and table tennis with the local residents. While relaxing after playing basketball, he saw a beautiful girl his age named Mei Ying. Confidently, he approached her, got to know her, and found out that she was a violinist. Dree was very happy that Mei Ying was fluent in English, so he had no trouble interacting with her. However, Dree and Mei Ying's closeness in the park catches the attention of Cheng, a 14-year-old boy who turns out to like Mei Ying and dislikes seeing their closeness. Feeling that Dree was being presumptuous by approaching Mei Ying, Cheng then beat him up. Dree's tiny body was knocked to the ground easily because Cheng was bigger and stronger than him. Mei Ying immediately broke up their fight and told Cheng to leave. When he got home, Dree hid the bruises on his face using his mother's makeup so she wouldn't worry. The following day, Dree was escorted by his mother to his new school where Mei Ying and Cheng also attended. In the afternoon, Mr. Han went to their house to fix a broken hot water faucet. On the other hand, Sherry, who had just come home from work, was once again irritated by Dree's behavior who always carelessly put down his jacket, even though she only asked him to hang the jacket in its place. Mr. Even Han, who was fixing something in the bathroom, couldn't help but see the debate between the mother and son. Long story short, over time, Dree and Mei Ying became closer because they were classmates at school. Dree always cheers Mei Ying on when she is practicing the violin because Mei Ying will enter a music competition which means a lot to her and her parents. On the other hand, as Dree and Mei Ying's friendship grows, Dree also has to avoid Cheng and his friends who try to bully him harshly whenever the opportunity arises. Dree could only hide whenever he saw Cheng nearby because if Cheng and his friends realized his presence, they would immediately chase him and bully him. When Dree was walking with his mother, he was amazed to see the children who were learning Kung Fu at a Kung Fu college not far from there. However, when he went inside and saw Cheng practicing Kung Fu there, he immediately felt hopeless because he had hoped to practice Kung Fu there to beat Cheng. Dree, who felt annoyed, then left the place and got into an argument with his mother because he had always hidden the fact that he was being bullied by Cheng. He told his mother that he was regret to follow his mother to move to Beijing in tears. One day, Dree's school goes on a field trip to the Forbidden City, where Cheng also participates. After exploring the Forbidden City, Dri who was about to return home, saw Cheng and his friends on the road he was about to pass. He immediately went into hiding. An idea crossed his mind as he saw a bucket of dirty water nearby. He then threw dirty water at Cheng and his gang as revenge for always bullying him. Cheng and his friends chase Dri through the city streets and corner him in a back alley. At that place, Cheng and his friends immediately beat Dri brutally. When Dri had fallen helplessly, Cheng did not stop and would instead continue his attack. However, Cheng's attack was thwarted by Mr. Han. Cheng and his friends then attacked him, but Mr. Han managed to fend off all of their attacks. Dri was then amazed to see Mr. Han who turns out to be good at Kung Fu and can fight Cheng and his friends who are also students from a famous Kung Fu college. Mr. Han then heals Dri's wounds using the ancient Chinese medicine method of fire cupping and tells him that Cheng and his friends are not inherently evil, but were made that way by their teacher, Master Li 
who always taught his students not to show compassion for their enemies. Mr. Han said that there are no bad students, only bad teachers. Three then begged Mr. Han to teach him Kung Fu, but he refuses and instead takes the boy to meet Master Li at the Fighting Dragon College to make peace with Chang and his friends. However, upon arrival, Master Li rudely refused the offer of peace and challenged Mr. Han or Dri to fight with Cheng. Mr. Han, who accidentally saw the tournament poster on the wall, then suggested that Dri compete with Master Li's disciple one-on-one -on -one in the upcoming Open Kung Fu tournament. Not only that, he also asked Cheng and the others not to disturb Dri he was going to train for a Kung Fu tournament. Master Li reluctantly agrees to the terms provided Dri appears in the tournament. Mr. Han then explains to Dri that he will participate in an open kung fu tournament against Cheng. However, Dri immediately felt hopeless that he would not win the tournament because Cheng and his friends were the best students of the kung fu college. But Mr. Han said that what Cheng and his friends learned there was not real kung fu. He then promised to teach Dri real kung fu. Long story short, Dri became excited to go through his days because he could finally practice kung fu with Mr. Han. Arriving at Mr. Han's place, Dri was very surprised to see the car in the living room. However, Mr. Han didn't want to reveal why he parked his car in the living room and then told him to get ready to start his training. Mr. Han started training Dri by having the boy do common movements such as taking off and putting on his jacket. Dri continues to do these movements over and over again. He then asked why Kung Fu practice only like this, but Mr. Han told him to stay focused on training. Day after day passed, and Dri still practiced Kung Fu by doing these movements every day, in the heat or rain until finally he was fed up with Mr. Han's training because he thought he would never be able to match Cheng if his training was only about putting on and taking off his jacket. Dri then decided to stop and just give up from the Kung Fu tournament. Hearing Dri's words, Mr. Han then called back the boy and suddenly attacked him. But Dri can easily fend off Mr. Han, just by using the moves he'd been practicing all along. Mr. Han then tells Dri that composure and maturity are the true keys to mastering martial arts, not punch and strength. He teaches this by having him perform repetitive movements using his jacket, which teaches him that Kung Fu exists in everyday life, where all things are done as Kung Fu and Kung Fu is a way of treating other people. After listening to a brief explanation of the true meaning of Kung Fu, Dri decided to practice Kung Fu with Mr. Han. One day, Mr. Han took Dri to the Wuding Mountains Taoist Temple, where he practiced Kung Fu with his father as a child. Arriving at the Kung Fu College, Dri was stunned by the beauty of the Kung Fu movement that he had never seen anywhere else. He was so amazed to see a woman doing Kung Fu moves that can make a cobra imitate her movements. He and Mr. Han then practiced Kung Fu at the temple for some time. After that, he continued his Kung Fu practice at Mr. Han's place and he also seemed to always be serious about their practice. After weeks of non-stop Kung Fu practice, Mr. Han then gave Dri a day off. Because he was on Kung Fu training holiday, Dri went to see Mei Ying, and persuaded her to skip violin practice so they could have fun together. However, while playing with Dri, Mei Ying got a call from her parents because she was almost late for the violin audition, which was suddenly pushed a day. Because they had incited Mei Ying to skip training, Mei Ying's parents saw Dri as a bad influence and forbade him to see Mei Ying again. Dri feels guilty for causing Mei Ying to get into trouble and sad that he can't see her again. Before leaving, Dri stopped by Mr. Han's place, and was very surprised to see Mr. Han who looks very depressed, is destroying his car. With tears in his eyes, Mr. Han then explains that he crashed the car years ago, which instantly killed his wife and 10-year-old son. Every year, he repairs his car but destroys it again to remind himself of the tragic event. After hearing the sad story of Mr. Han, Dri is determined to train harder to help the teacher overcome his trauma. Long story short, Dri resumed his training and trained harder as the tournament drew near. Mr. Han then takes him to the tournament site where they pay their respects and thank each other for everything they've been through together. Dri thanked Mr. Han as willing to teach him Kung Fu and be his best friend all along. Mr. Han also thanked Dri because he had helped him out of the adversity and trauma of the past that had haunted him. Dri was very happy and hugged his teacher when Mr. Han presented him with clothes like the people who practiced Kung Fu in the Wuding Mountains, which he would wear to the tournament. Mr. Han then helped him write and read an apology note in Chinese that he would pass on to Mei Ying's father. Unexpectedly, Mei Ying's father accepted his apology and allowed him to be friends with Mei Ying again. The man even promised that he and Mei Ying would attend a Kung Fu tournament to support him. The day of the Kung Fu tournament arrived. Dri seemed nervous to see the audience's enthusiasm that filled the battle arena, where it was seen that Mei Ying and her parents really came to support him. Sherry was sitting next to Mei Ying. In the tournament, Dri who initially lacked confidence, had to drop points because of the foul he committed. However, he finally got up and was able to beat his opponents and advanced to the semifinals. 
Shang did the same and finished off his opponents fiercely. Dri then defeats one of Master Li's disciples, so he orders Liang, who was Dri's opponent in the semifinals, to injure Dri. Liang didn't want to do it, but he had to obey his master's orders. Liang attacks Dri with a series of attacks aimed at immobilizing Dri's legs, which results in automatic disqualification and sends Dri through to the final round. Dri was immediately taken to the medical room, while Liang looked sad because he felt sorry for him. Although Dri could advance to the final round to face Cheng, he only had a limited amount of time to return to the ring, especially with his broken leg and doctors saying he couldn't continue the fight. Dri then pleaded with Mr. Han to heal his leg through the fire cupping method. Initially Mr. Han refuses and asks him to give up because he thinks he has met Master Liu's challenge. However, Dri said that he had to beat Cheng because he wanted to overcome his fears. What he feared the most was not the bullying he experienced but the fear that was entrenched in his heart. On the other hand, a tournament organizer is waiting for Dri to appear in the final round because if he doesn't appear, he will be considered disqualified and Cheng will be declared the tournament's winner. Mr. Han immediately performed fire cupping on Dri and finally he was able to return to the tournament arena and face Cheng in the final round. Cheng starts the fight by directly throwing Dri out of the arena which causes him to lose by one point. However, he quickly turned things around by defeating Cheng and earning two points in a row. Seeing this, Master Li ordered Cheng to strike Dri on his injured leg with a powerful kick, causing Dri to lose his balance. Cheng then managed to get one point. Since both of them get the same points, then one remaining match will determine the winner. Dri struggled with all his might and managed to get up by imitating the snake stance used by a woman in the Taoist temple. Whereas previously, Mr. Han never taught the technique. Unexpectedly, this move succeeded in making Cheng change his attack style to follow his movements and Dri took the opportunity to defeat Cheng. Finally, Dri can win the Kung Fu tournament, along with the respect of Cheng and his friends. Cheng then gives the trophy to Dri and looks happy with his win and acknowledges his greatness. Cheng and all the Fighting Dragon Kung Fu School students then bowed respectfully to Mr. Han, and taking the man as their new teacher, replaces Master Li, and the film ends.